what it means. Without Jesus, we would be separated. But because of your plan, because you sent Jesus to earth, the Word made flesh, we know you can. worship at your feet. We thank you for that holy night. Yeah. So, 
you know what's interesting about this background, this Advent background, is that um, that picture I've seen used more this year than any other year. And when I put it together, I hadn't seen it ever. And so now, like I saw, like three ministers from Roman Bible post something about like Christmas Eve, which we're not having a Christmas Eve service. Forget that. Um, but three pastors are using it to advertise Christmas Eve. I saw a big church using it for something. I'm like, don't you guys have someone who could come up with something a little bit better than Canva, which is a program on my phone? Of course they do. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting that that picture is making its rounds. Um, and it's a free picture. Uh, I have the rights to use it. I got, off, got it off a program that I purchased, so we're good. Um, but hey, let's get to the word. Let's get to the important stuff. I'm a little loud. Yeah. Am I a little loud? Yeah. Bring me down, down, down. Perfect. I, I'm, I'm not even yelling yet. Yeah. I'm not even yelling. I'm just, I'm excited. Hey, last week we talked about peace and how Jesus didn't come to bring you peace. That's Christmas Eve. Amen. And he didn't come to bring you peace. What are you talking about? The Bible says, Jesus says, red letters say, I didn't come to bring you peace, I came to bring you sword. His death brought peace when we choose to accept him into our lives. And even then, every situation in our life might look restless. It might look unpeaceful, right? It might look terrible, but yet Jesus within us is creating a peace that goes beyond any understanding. And then the week before, we talked about hope and how we can find hope by giving up our own imagination. Anybody ever let their imagination run wild on their life? Yeah. And it just brings you to this place that's hopeless, broken, distraught. But if you give up your imagination, God really wants to take hold of your life and bring you hope. Amen. And so that, that was two weeks ago and last week. But this week, I want to talk about... Now, correct me if I get this word wrong, apathy, and the relationship it has with love. Amen. Because a lot of people in this world today say, apathy is the opposite of love, but I'm here to tell you, I'm sorry, I disagree. It's a reason, it's a portion of the opposite of love, but it is not the complete portion. Apathy is the lack of, under or lack of interest. Just because someone doesn't seem interested to you does not mean they don't love you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But in our world today, if you're not interested in me, you're not interested in my agenda, therefore you don't love me. Yeah. If you're not interested in me, then you, you don't have anything to do with me, then you don't love. If you don't, if you don't go along with who I say I am, uh -huh. then you must not be interested, therefore you, you don't love. But the reality is how many times do we give more credit to someone who's not interested in us than we do to those that show too much interest and don't love. <laughs> now let me, let me throw out an example, and I, I apologize if I step on anyone's feet, but Westboro Baptist Church, anybody? They show a lot of care for someone because they say, hey, you're going to hell unless you change your ways, and they do it in such a hateful way. <laughs> but they are so interested in those people that they're protesting. <laughs> Y'all get it? Like, we put interest into those things that we hate. Yeah. So how can interest or lack of interest be a form of hate if we pour more interest into the things we hate than the things we love? Amen. So yeah, today is about apathy. Because we need to change the way we show interest in our lives. Amen. How many of y'all are, are surrounded by news stories. Okay, how many of you turn on the, the news ever in a week? How many of you turn the news on your phone in a week? Whether it's through Facebook or any other method. That's real! I, I just downloaded the Fox News app. Forgive me if you don't like Fox News. It's my opinion. You know? I, I mean, I, have, I used to have Newsmax and all these. I, I deleted all news media, and it was the most peaceful time of my life. And then I download the Fox News app, and I forget it's there, and then I'm like, oh, I heard this was happening. Tornadoes, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So I go, and they have, they have a report on tornadoes that happened, and I'm like, oh, no, poor them. Let's pray. But if I delete it, if I delete all the news apps, then I don't care. And therefore, you don't love them. That's what the media tells us, right? We are so jacked up in our world. 
in our nation. Man, if, if I don't support you, then I don't love you. You know what? Sometimes the lack of support does show the most support. Because I want you to know Jesus. The lack of support in your sin means that I actually want to tell you about hell. Amen. Amen. And then how real it is. And how one day you could possibly end there. Someone asked for fire and brimstone. Here you go, David. Okay. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm here to tell each and every one of you today that hell is real and you could be going there. That is true. I'm not saying you are going there because I don't know each of you on that personal level. Does that mean I don't love you? It tells you to love your strangers. Amen. Dude, does that mean you're interested in them? To the point that Jesus is interested in them. How far is he willing to take you with him? And so I want to dig into the scripture before I just give up my entire message. Lola inspired this message, and then I had a talk with Brent Ressler, who many of you know, and I was like, man, I've got to throw this concept out at you, and I'm like, apathy. And he goes, yeah, that's the opposite of, of love. And then I was like, really? And I shared kind of what I shared with him, you guys just now with him, and he goes, I never thought about it. But you're kind of right. Because we are so brainwashed in this nation to think me yep. first, then Amen. the world. Amen. And the reality is we've got to stop thinking what's in it for me. Amen. Because let's be real, there's nothing in it for you. Amen. It should be what's in it for God. Amen. And so let's dig into the scripture. Lola's concept, and many of you found out on Wednesday, Lola's concept was patience uh, leads to anger, right? And anger is like not love. Impatience. 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 My bad. You know what I'm saying. Impatience. Impatience is a symptom of angry, and that, therefore, when you're not patient with somebody, you don't love them. So be patient with me today. I need your love. I need your love. So real quick, First Corinthians 13, verse four. Lola just read the first part. She didn't even know she was reading. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, Amen. but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses in faith, and is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Amen. Have you all ever fallen to a circumstance? <laughs> yeah. Oh, snap. You know, if we put Jesus, that name Jesus, in for love, the Savior of the world, he would fit every one of those things. Do y'all think it's possible for you to fit every one of those? But Matthew 5, 48 says, be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Third week in a row, I brought that scripture up. Sorry, I'll stop repeating it one day. And if you read that section of scripture in context, it means you're going to strive for perfection. So shouldn't we strive for these attributes of love? Like God is calling on us right now to stop being so impatient. Amen. I'm not even to the proverb that talks about impatience. We, we are in a generation that says that the greatest concept is if you show interest in me my way, then that shows that you love me. I don't, did y'all catch my, my wording there? Mm-hmm. If you show interest in me, my way, then you show you love me. Yeah. Let me hurt you for a second. Sorry, sorry, and I'm going to use you as a guinea pig. I don't care about your fishing trips. <laughs> he knows that's a lie. Straight from the pit of hell, because I actually do care about his fishing trips. <laughs> But how many of y'all want to look at me and go, Ben, I don't care about your bicycling rides. <laughs> Let's be real. I, honestly, Lola gets it mostly. But here's the thing. I know, I know she doesn't always care about my bicycle rides, but the reality is I know she still loves me. She loves me beyond my bicycle enthusiasm. This week I plan on going at least once, if not three times. You know, I'm not, like, it's cold out, Ben. You're nuts. You're crazy. But the reality is that, that your Love goes beyond the interests of myself. Amen. Mm-hmm. And my love goes beyond the interest of yourself. But over all of that, Jesus' love goes beyond the interest of anyone's interest. Amen. And 
we are called to carry that love out. We are called to carry out the love that tries to be patient in all times. It tries to be kind at all times. Anybody ever get pulled over and you just want to be smart with the cop, or is that just me? <laughs> Anybody ever get cut off and you just want to be really kind and loving to the person who cut you off? <laughs> or you cut someone off and they come and flip you the bird. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, wow, that was nice. Let's go be nice to them. Anybody, all the time, that's you, all the time, no matter what the situation is, you're always nice. Like, I might, Lola's been, been really good at saying, Ben, you're really good at pushing my buttons. And she doesn't say it that kindly. Um, and I don't even know, like, sometimes I'm so oblivious to my own actions that I don't even realize what I'm doing. Right? She has to love me beyond that. Because she wasn't called to love me to that. Yeah. And that's an issue that we have as Americans, is that we'll love you to a point. Yes. And then, oh, no, 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 you just offended me. That's right. You just, oh, you, you mean you don't care about that group of people? You don't care about who I am? I've labeled myself. I get to be whatever I want to be. If I want to be an oak tree, then I will register as an oak tree. <laughs> but the reality is, is that's not real. Amen. Just like this idea of love that we have in this country isn't real. Amen. Man, if only they would understand love. Amen. It's a four-letter word that's more powerful. It's almost more powerful than the name of Jesus because it is in his name. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's in his name. And the reality of this is that we, we, have to, we have to strive. Anybody ever strive for anything? Was it easy? No. Oh. We should not have always an easy time loving people. If it Amen. comes off easy, then stretch yourself. Amen. Where is it that you're missing? In this 1 Corinthians 13, what is it that you're missing? I mean, the world tells us the opposite of love is apathy. That is it. That is final. Your interest in me does not show love. And I would literally probably look at that person who wrote that and say, then Westboro Baptist Church loves the LGBTQ. They love people who have abortions. They love... What's the one thing that ticks you off the most and you make sure everybody knows it? Then you love that. If that's the reality of what people say, what preachers are preaching, then your apathy shows how much you actually love somebody. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because we say that's not really interest in somebody. I beg to differ. You know, it's not an easy word today because what you put your mind to shows that you're very interested in it. I think that we can become so caught up in our hate that we don't recognize it as hate. That is true. And I think the opposite of hate, if I were to say it simply, and someone said this week, oh, that's, that's extreme. The opposite of love is hate. Period. Yes. Mm -hmm. The opposite of Jesus-type love is real life hate. Amen. Jesus did not love sin. He did not like sin. He hates sin. Amen. Amen. My friend who, who just went through a yeah. terrible thing, a divorce, he kept on calling me and telling me, but Ben, God hates the divorce. And I'm like, I get it. Keep pursuing her. Yes. Amen. But Ben, God hates the divorce. I get it. Keep pursuing her. Our world is so fallen that we have to pursue the things that don't want to pursue us. Amen. How many times in our walk, in our life, do we show the love of God by showing interest in someone who doesn't show interest back? Those people that write you off, that ignore you, that say they're done, they, they crucify you to the bloodiest of bloody popes. Like, if you had a spiritual life, you would just be a bloody mess. 
you'd be laying on the ground going, God, I don't know if I can do this any further because you chose to love that person for that long. Amen. You chose to love the calling God has on your life because he's called you to love them. Amen. So often in our life, we, we choose to oppose love. We choose to be, you know, we choose not to even think about injustices. Right? Because, I mean, if we're really honest, that the truth, the Bible tells us that the opposite of apathy is injustice. Or, sorry, the ap opposite, I just word ap apathy because it's in my notes. The opposite of love is injustice. The Bible says that. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says that injustice is the opposite of love. It says being irritable. <coughs> Anybody ever be irritable? My bad. Stop lying over there, woman. <laughs> Anybody ever keep any records of wrongs? Or keep records at all? Because, I mean, it doesn't... I mean, if we kept records of wrongs, then we're showing that we don't love. We, we can't get over something that we kept a record of five years ago. Let's go even further. How many, how many have ever kept a record of a wrong over 10 years? Some of y'all are like, Ben, you haven't even been alive 10 years. I have. I have. You know? That's real. But it doesn't show anyone that you love them. Amen. Lola and I, when we first got married, that was the biggest thing anybody ever talked to us. Just don't hold anything against them that they did in the past. Don't hold anything against them that they did in the past. Every now and then, it happens, and we have to ask each other for forgiveness. Because we were supposed to let that go three days ago. Amen. Now, I can say literally three days ago, because normally that's as long as it takes for us to get it out. We have a rule. Oh no, there's times where I'm like, remember? Um, I, I, I do things now. This, this might be wrong. This might be Ben admitting his sin. Um, she'll say something, and I'll be like, I'll just remember that and use it against you. But it's good stuff. It's good stuff. She'll be like, I'm so annoyed at this. And I'll be like, yeah, I'll remember that. Because you do the same thing. And so I'll just make a statement. And I'll be like, hey. So like this week, she learned about impatience. And I was like, every time she got mad at me, I was like, just patience. You gotta love me. Patience. You know what made her mad? Her impatience. It wasn't me. See, but there's so often... Aren't we called to iron sharpen iron? Yes. She told me the revelation she had from God. Of course I'm going to use it with her. Not against her. Because I want to see her sharpen the love that she has for the king of kings. Amen. I, I didn't do it in a mean way. I mostly was joking. But at the same time, I did it in a loving way. I meant to be doing it in love. Like, hey, honey, I want to point you to the Word of God. And the Word of God this week, the biggest lesson that you've told me about, that you've learned this week, is this, this impatient thing. Patience leads to love. Impatience leads to anger. Anger leads to you yelling at me. And yelling, I don't feel loved at all. But I said it like, hey, remember patience. My dad used to say, patience is a virtue, my son. Almost to the point that it's like, really, dad? I don't want to do that to her. Okay? But I just, patience. And even through the week, you can see this growth in somebody. Amen. Just by saying, hey, remember? And it's like this growth happens right before your eyes that the Lord had intended to grow in you. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't do it on your own. Yep. You had to call on the brothers and sisters around you. That is love. That is what love looks like. It doesn't look like the world wants you to look at it. They go, no, 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 that you happy wife, happy life. <laughs> didn't we learn about that last week? Uh -huh. Man, Jesus didn't come to bring peace to the world. He came to bring a sword. Not to divide what marriage, but to enhance. Amen. <clears throat> when we fight, we get to the point. And then we fix it. Amen. By praying and seeking God's help. Why? Because it's important that we show each other love. I want to go through the rest of this. The opposite of love is rude. Yep. Anybody?
anybody ever rude to anybody? No. 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 Mm -hmm. Not us. Yep. <laughs> How about this? Demanding of their own interests. Yep. Yeah. Hey, no, we're going to do it my way, and that's the only way. I don't ever do that with Lola, ever. <laughs> Every now and then. I don't see lying. Good, good. Lying's not in there. What about boastful? Anyone ever just so proud and boastful? Of Ed with fishing? Yeah. He's joking. I've never seen him say a fish story. I might have heard it but I've never seen him say a fish story. <laughs> I caught a fish this big. That's right. It was exactly right. Okay, but you don't know. <laughs> Anyone ever proud before somebody? Potty? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, look at how they look. No, no. Yeah. Right? Anyone ever jealous of somebody? I can think of uh, a farmer in the area. He has a Dodge Viper. I saw it for the first time. I, 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 I walk up to it and I get my phone ready for a selfie and I make it look like it's mine, you know? And I go in and I find out it's his and I'm like, that's such a cool car! I did not want that car ever. <laughs> that is such a cool car, but think if I were to go, oh man, that's your car? And I was jealous towards that person. There, that, that communication would have been done. I still say hi to them. I still talk to them. Sometimes. <laughs> the opposite of love gives up. Anyone ever give up? You give up on prayer? You give up on praying for somebody? They'll never come. Anyone? They'll never, they'll never understand. I've been told by people who are mature Christians, that's a lost cause. Get over yourself. Choose to love them beyond their lost causeness. That's right. Or, in that case, choose to love them beyond your own lost causeness. Amen. Amen. God is calling on us to be the opposite of all this. It loses faith. Yeah. Anybody ever lose faith in this place? I mean, I'm going to be honest. There are times where I'm like, Lord, are you sure? Is that real? It's never... Uh, sorry, I wrote that down wrong. Um, it does not endure. It doesn't endure. It doesn't finish the race. How many of us don't finish the race for somebody? You, let alone ourselves. There's a situation in your life and you're just like, I'm done. I'm not even giving it up to God. I'm just like, God, forget you. I'm done. Anybody? That'll happen. There are situations in our life that us as humans, we go, I can't handle this. Because we haven't really focused on the king of kings. Y'all ever see that? Mm -hmm. Y'all ever know that? You ever, you ever run into a ruined situation like that? It runs from every negative circumstance. You know, a warrior runs into battle but someone who loves runs into that same battle. Amen. Someone who doesn't love runs away from it. Someone who doesn't want to love, they run away from it. Yeah. I'm sorry, but my friend's wife who ran from him chose not to love him. Yeah. And I know too many men, friends of mine that have gone through that, and Lola knows way too many women who have had husbands run from them. Even, even this week, I ran across a friend from high school <coughs> on Facebook. And her post said, look at this guy. He calls himself a husband, and he ran from me. He was having an affair and posted it on Facebook. Oh That's how she, she found out on Thanksgiving. You want to talk about the lack of love our nation has for each other? Let's look at the young people and, and, and whether they, if they're dedicated to one another or not. God is calling on us right now to understand something we cannot understand in our own mind. 
I gotta read Proverbs 14, 29. This is the scripture that Lola got with like with patience. Okay. Or impatience and anger. But check this out. I'm gonna read it in two versions, but the first one is NLT and it says this. People with understanding control their anger. Uh-huh. How many of y'all control your anger at all times? <laughs> okay. That literally says people with understanding control their anger. Uh-huh. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Anyone ever had hot temper? My mom was notorious when I was growing up to say, well, I'm Irish. <laughs> if Don were here, I'd say, well, she's a redhead. You know? Anyone Irish here? A little bit? Yeah. I mean, we can have tempers, if you know what I mean. But we are called to have understanding so that we can control it. Check this out. Verse 30. A peaceful heart. Jesus died for you. You can find this. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Amen. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Amen. You know, when I read this translation, the opposite of love is a lack of understanding Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. Don't just wait. <laughs> this translation got some preaching on it. <laughs> the opposite of love is a lacking of the understanding of who Jesus is. In every aspect of our life. What do we understand? Maybe the real question this Christmas is not what do we understand, but Lord, what have I decided I do not want to understand? Amen. Yeah, what do I understand? Oh, that's an easy one. I can tell you everything I understand, but when we dig deep and say, Lord, what do I not understand? You have to learn something you don't know. What do I understand means I'm looking at what I know. What I do not understand is what I don't know. It's going to be that thrive, that, that striving so you can thrive mentality. I've got to strive. I've got to dig deep to find out what I'm not understanding. When you read the word, what do I not understand should be one of the main concepts and questions you ask while reading the word. I forget who I was talking to, but they said they were reading the word and and, and it was awesome, and I loved it. And, and sometimes we read the Word to speed ourselves through the Word and say we've read it. And that's not bad. I'm not saying that's bad. I want you to hear that. I think it's good to read the Word and, and read it. But I also think it's good to slow down, take your time, and dig. Amen. Mm-hmm. And find the lack of understanding in ourselves so that we can understand the Lord more. Because when we read the Word of God, we're digging in Him to find out who we need to be. Amen. That's right. You see, you got when we find out who he is, then we have to implement that. That's the hard part. Yeah. And I can read it and I can understand it, but can I live it? Yeah. Can I do what God's called me to do? Amen. Uh, an easier question to ask, or a better way to put this is, Lord, what have I decided to choose not to love? If I don't understand it, how can I love it? That's true. So maybe the opposite of love is misunderstanding. Now sin's not that hard to misunderstand. It's pretty black and white. If it's a sin, it's a hate. If it's a person, it's a love. We can say that to people and because they don't understand it, they won't know how to love you. Hate the sin, love the person. I don't understand that. This is my lifestyle. So they choose to hate because if you hate what I do, then you hate me. But that's not the case. Amen. That's not the case. Your heart is more pure than that. Mm-hmm. I love you. It's not you who I hate. It's, I don't hate anyone. When Obama or Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There used to be a joke when he was first in office and it was Biden and it was Obama and Biden, you know? <laughs> Sorry. I'm on a hit list. Um, we love you. Thanks. Uh, but when Osama bin Laden, when he was being hunted for, my heart ached for him. And he destroyed our country. Does your heart ache for lost people? Amen. Amen. Make them know that your heart 
aches for them rather than you hating their sin. Amen. They know you hate it. They already know that they're sinning. They get that they're doing wrong. Let them know your heart is aching for them, not for their sin. Amen. Like, oh, you're living the wrong life. No, hey, man, I just love you. I just love you. I gotta tell you because I do love you and hard, hard love is good love. My dad didn't like giving me a spanking when I deserved one. Or talk to me when I deserved a talking to. But he did it anyway. My mom hated it even worse. You know, I'm an antagonist as a third born. Get over yourself. <laughs> but when it came to my brothers and my parents, I knew what buttons to push on purpose. Sometimes, and sometimes by accident. <laughs> and even then, my mom didn't like talking to me or setting me aside and having conversations with me. But she did it anyway because she loved me. Amen. Mm -hmm. The father doesn't like having to sit down and pull you to the side and have a conversation with you, but he'll do it because he loves you. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to model that. We need to model that because we are called to love one another. Hot temper and foolishness. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. So, the opposite of love is unhealthy. I mean, we, we see it in these TV shows. Biggest Loser. Anybody ever watch Biggest Loser? Or is that just my... Okay. Well, anyway, they would say... It's not on anymore. It's an old show. Sorry. Um, but they would always say, you never took time for yourself, therefore you never cared for yourself, therefore you never loved yourself. Right? How often are we allowing ourselves to care for ourselves and become healthy? Yes. Amen. Even if it's just reading the Word of God, how often will we care for ourselves through the Word of God? Amen. And jealousy can make you sick. Yeah. You like puking? <laughs> Find some jealousy. <laughs> right? I want to read the Passion Translation because I think it I think it helps us understand a little bit more. Verse 29 says, When your heart overflows with understanding, you will be slow to get angry. But if you are quick-tempered, your impatience will quickly be will be quickly seen by all. A tender, tranquil heart will make you healthy, but jealousy can make you sick. A quick temper will cause your impatience to be quickly seen. By the way, 1 Corinthians 13. Ah, gotta read it, right? Gotta read it. Love is impatient and not kind. Did I read, did I read that right? No. Love is patient and kind. But here, if your heart overflows with understanding, you will be slow to get angry. And if you're slow to get angry, you won't have a quick temper, and your patience will be slower to find than your impatience. If you're quick-tempered, your impatience will be quickly seen. Y'all yep. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. remember Romans 12, 19 through 21? It talks about leave vengeance to the righteous anger of God. Amen. How many of us are quick to respond in vengeance <laughs> through our words? Because someone says something they don't like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to hold on to that responsibility because you have to be patient. Patience will overcome the evil that wants to get out of you. Patience will, will create a, a slow temper. A temper that smolders, right? You like that? <laughs> and can be easily put out with the douse of Holy Spirit. If you give time for the Holy Spirit to douse your anger, Amen. you won't have that fire raging within you to destroy somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. A quick temper says, no, let's light this candle. <laughs> right? Amen. It lights, it, it fuses for set seconds and blows up. <laughs> and it lit a whole war up. That's, right. That's why we should get rid of red buttons. But unfortunately, we can't get rid of those spiritual red buttons that we choose to pay attention to. 
Sometimes in our life, we, we go to the news. It's just me. I go to the news and I see something I don't like and Lola hears about my anger towards it and it kind of sets her off. And We have to control our temper, so get rid of the news. I get that you want to know what's going on in this world around you, but when I read the Bible, I don't read Jesus going to the news or going to the, the outlets and saying, hey, look at what's going on in the world. He says, hey, look at me. Now look to God. Now keep your focus on God and give him the glory. Amen. Because that's all that matters. Man, love. How is love seen? Not in this world, but of God. How is love seen? It's seen through your patience, through your kindness. It is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Oh, man, that's a hard one, Lola. I'm sorry. <laughs> not for you, for me. <laughs> that was a joke. It keeps no record of being wrong. It doesn't rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. When people come into the saving grace of Jesus, there should be many parties because as we learn our lessons of love, we should be partying, we should be rejoicing, we should be giving praise to God. Amen. When Lola came to me this, this week, I'm going to have her come up, but when she came to me this week and she's like, hey, I, I learned something and it's something I struggle with and, then, and man, I need to find patience because patience is the way that I smother this stupidity. She didn't say it exactly like that, but that's how I took it. And so when she says this, I'm like rejoicing with her. That is so cool because I never thought about it either. And I'm like, wow, how can I implement patience in my life to become more like what she's talking about? Because patience is a sign of kingdom mischief. Yeah. Amen. Patience is a sign that God's doing something bigger than myself. Can I wait three more years? I know we were joking out about Biden being in office for three more years and how I don't think the world will make it. But will you? Will you, for the kingdom of God, make it another three years? Yeah. I made it through four of another guy, and then four of another guy, and four more of another guy, and four more of that, and the, the next guy, and four of the next. Like, I've made it 37 years. Y'all are sitting there going, oh, but you got nothing on me. Good. Because the reality is we've made it this far for the king of kings. Can we make it another? Yeah. However many. Yeah. If that's how God wills, then you should. I love people. Let me love them better. Stop pulling out their injustices and start loving them to the core because it's when the Holy Spirit interferes in their life, not when you do. Amen. The Holy Spirit runs rampant, will we? Last week, last week we spoke about peace. I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword, a sword, a sword, a sword, a sword in this world that nobody understands, a sword. Because the peace of God, no one understands in this world, it's about Him. Amen. It's about Him. The week before, what did we talk about? Oh. Hope. Hope. Man, if I just give my imagination away, the hope of God will smother everything. And it will smother all my worries, all my distractions, all my everything. My tranquil life is found in His hope. My tranquility is found in His hope. My peacefulness is found in His hope. My joy and love are found in His hope. This week we're talking about love. And it's not really just about the topic of love, but how do we become more loving? How do we show up more? Oh, that guy. Hey, hey, you like that? Love is big. Love is huge. And I know there's two more. Next week is going to be different. It's Advent season. There's an arrival of a king on the horizon. How are we going to announce him to come in? How are we going to show the hope of our imagination being gone so we can find his peace? A peace beyond understanding that we can't control. Because he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. A sword divides. When you choose Jesus, your family divides. When you choose Jesus, your friends divide. When you choose all of the glory of God, people don't necessarily sit by your side and go, oh, I'll be a part of this. But they run from it. 
they don't have the understanding of the peace of God. Yeah. And then you come to love. Woo! It's almost like whoever created the Advent thing was like, well, you got, you got hope. Oh, that's good. Let's bring them down with peace. We, we've got to get away from hope. God, let's destroy them with the peace of God, the peace of the Savior, the peace that didn't come to bring peace but came to bring a sword. Then let's bring them back because they're going to they're going to turn, they're going to mend the relationships with the love of the King. It's not about mending relationships, it's about mending God with them. Then in a way that is mending relationships, isn't it? If I can introduce you to Jesus, then your relationships are going to be so good. Because y'all are going to be in the same mindset. Because Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that works in them, works in me. And when the same Holy Spirit works in them, works in me, then it, everything's good. Yeah. And see, that's where love leads. When we love like Jesus loves, then we love to the point where they become us. And we become them. And the Holy Spirit is real and alive and mends us all. Because the same Holy Spirit that lives in me needs to live in us. Are we hungry this morning? Are we thirsty? Are we eager? Are we excited? Are we about ready to dance a little dance, shout a little shout, praise a little praise, give glory to God and get ready to get out of here so that when we bust through those doors, the world doesn't see what's going to come at it because the love of God, the authentic, true love of God is going to just radiate off of you. Because that's what this world needs. Not another person saying, oh, they're sinning. We've done that for ages. It's worked so wonderfully, hasn't it? The love of Jesus needs you. The love of God has to have you. He needs you. He longs for you. And because he longs for you, I long for you to know him. Heaven is real and hell is too. Come with me. Let's journey to heaven. Let's figure this out on the way. I want to pray with you. Maybe you need a little extra of that love of Christ today. I want to pray for you. I'll open up the front. Do what you want. Make your way through the rows and the aisle. Yeah, anybody hate this right here? It's real. It's different. I like it. I like it. I heard more com complaints when we ended the, the service about uh, last Sunday. I don't have anywhere to take notes. I heard it mostly from Pastor Ed. Um, I'm kidding. I heard it from more than just Pastor Ed. I said it. My wife said it. I said, let's try it out for a week or two. Let's have fun. I want to pray with you. Maybe you have someone on your heart that you want to show the love of God to. And you, you tried and tried and tried and tried. It seems like failure has come up. You almost want to say they're a lost cause. Maybe you have said they're a lost cause. God wants to bust through that lost cause. Through the person who claimed it to be a lost cause. I want to pray over you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for Lola for helping me with it. Thank you for Brent for, for challenging my mind on it. Thank you for, Lord, just the words that you put before me. And Lord, thank you for this message this morning. You love beyond. You love beyond anything we could ever imagine. It's, it's beyond our understanding. But Lord, I want to grasp a little bit of it today. I want to grab something today. So Lord, I pray that you would infuse your love in me and that I could understand another little bit of it. Whether it be patience or kindness or, or fighting on the side of injustices or whatever, Lord. Whatever that is, open that up to me. Help me see that. Lord, shower down your rains to put out the fires that should exist. The fires that make me hate fires that make me quick tempered, the fires that make me want to just go after the people instead of going after you. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just fall in this place more now. Lord, I pray over every single individual that has somebody on their heart right now, that they just need the love of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would embolden them, give them the courage, and give them motivation and right motive for what you're about to do next. Lord, I pray that you would just capture the hearts before any communication starts. 
Holy Spirit, go out and touch their hearts right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything you're doing. Continue to strengthen us this morning as we worship out in your glory. Help us praise your name and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Let's, I don't even know what song you're singing. Oh, joy to the world. Thank you. I love that being up there. So we're going to sing joy to the world. If you want, please stand and let's sing. 